Okay, let's drive through um, question. I think I'm going to do question 191 to 196 because all these are in the same ballpark type um, of questions. So let's get 191 out of the way, which is exactly the same thing as we've just been just been doing. Um, they're asking for, again, the standard deviation. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use my, again, use I'm just going to use my spreadsheet because of time. And I'm just going to, one second, insert, um, so the formulas remain, I hope, um, in this whole debate, this thing we're doing. But I'm just going to, because you, you're you using your calculator, I know, but so that it's clear, so you can see what I'm doing. So let's see. So we have um, the figures we need to put in here in terms of the, in terms of the inputs as we have so let's just go I'm sure you have your page make sure you have your page and you can see exactly what I am doing so what do we have here so we have um, five six six we have five four five we have five six nine and we have five four two and we have five five one and we have Five six one. So I'm trying to find the mean. So the mean is um, yes divided by this time I have six items in there. So that's the mean. So the mean is five five five. So I'm just going to see if this will let me drag itself. It will if it. If, whoops, sorry, it won't. Oops, sorry, let's just try that again. No, it won't. It doesn't like it. So I'm just going to go. Let's try if, it, if, it, if it, it'll accept it. Oh, it will. Okay, oh, that's fine. That does. As I don't really mind if it doesn't like it. Um, that's the key point. So I've got the mean. So I've got x. I've got mean. So now all I have to do is drag this down. Pretty much. Okay, great. And then all I have to do is drag this down as well. Okay, great. I mean, forget all this, the, the decimal places. I can always arrange that. So what do we now have? We now have the sum of all of that. And we now have that divided by 6, because there are 6 items. And I have a little formula here. I mean, it's just a function. I just basically said, what is the square root? I basically just created the square root of this thing. And it's come out at 10 point, um, 10 point two nine, which is 10 point three. I mean, you can see how, of course, if you had a computer in the exam, which you do, I think maybe what we should discuss, try and find a way. I'm sure if you have, I doubt you'll have Excel, but you're pretty much doing this in your calculator, really, aren't you? So you have that. But the principle is, the principle is there. The principle is that find what x is, write it all out, find the mean, put the mean next to each of them subtract how far these figures are from the mean and and then we now square them and then divide that total it divided by the number of issues or six items items and then find the square root so this is a numerical figure by the way it's just sort of saying on average we're 10 each side of 555 if you think about it we're sort of saying 10 on the front is 10 556 and 546 it's not bad actually if you think five 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 look at here five six six is the lot five six nine you can the other side five four five so it gives you some sort of sort of idea of what's going on okay great so that's one nine that's one nine one that's one nine one let's carry on exactly the same thing i'm just going to now just adapt my slide because again writing is just you know you you've done this already so you're just using my slides to verify you're learning. I'm just going to change this now to 24.5. Um, 24.9. and 25.5. And I will get rid of oops, 25.5. And I will get rid of this. Delete. Okay, great. And then let me 
I'm not dividing this by 5 anymore. I'm dividing, sorry, not by 6. I'm dividing this by 5. <clears throat> so I have my mean, x minus the mean. It squared everything. Um, this thing here is not divided by 6, but by 5. And there's my square root of that, 0 0.322. Um, if you look at the answers, you can see it takes you nicely to to B. And that's it. Nice, simple areas. I think these are quite fair areas, personally. Um, you might not agree, but I think they're quite good. Okay, 193. So we come to this business of coefficient of variation. Nothing crazy. We're simply saying that, okay, thank you very much. We know how far we are away from the mean. You might say, oh, only the mean is 600, but, and we're 10 meters. We're, um, we're 10. Well, let's think of it like this. The reason why it's important is the same reason why ratio analysis is important. Imagine, right, that we had, um, if you like, a mark of a situation where the average was 600, and in your class, <coughs> let's think about it maybe from a wealth point of view. Um, really, I'm trying to think of how to sort of say, I'm trying to make this, I'm going to make this 6 million, and I'm going to call this a thousand. So here, this is a thousand on both sides. So standard deviation is a thousand. So we've got a standard deviation, one thousand, case A. In standard deviation, where the mean is also six million, the standard deviation is also a thousand. So the truth is that a thousand being away from six thousand has a much more bigger impact than a thousand being away from six million if you like, um, does. You know, th this is not very far away from the means. What I'm almost trying to say is that these numbers in themselves become irrelevant when we start comparing situations. So if we were wanted to compare scenarios, we need to look at it within the context that we're dealing with. So not just talking about the numbers, but actually talking about, well, what percentage of the mean what how far is this truly away from the mean so we talk about in terms of percentages so we're saying well thank you very much you're this distance away from me but as a percentage of the mean itself how far are you away from the mean how what's, what's the impact so to speak right so the coefficient of variation is almost saying okay we found standard deviation now as a percentage of the mean what is that what is that as a percentage of the of the mean and that's what coefficient of variation is and, and there's several ways to um, to apply that um, it's just it's almost like margin of safety it's it's a case of application really so coefficient of variation is find your standard deviation and find that as a percentage of the mean so let's look at this let's look at this picture um, um, what we have here is we have 10,500 I'm just gonna quickly find the standard deviation 10,000 500 and then we have 9,500 yes and then we have um, let me just go back to the question very quickly yes 10,500 and 9,500 and I'll just get rid of all of this change this again this is times divided by 2 and this is what we have I'll divide this by 2. So our standard deviation is 500. And the mean is 10,000. So the coefficient of variation is saying take your standard deviation, which is 500, and divide that by your mean. Yes, and that's your mean. And so we have 0 0.05. So your answer is B. There's really what percentage... Um, how far are you away truly from the mean? You're five percent away from the mean. If it makes any sense. So then that's all we're saying. You're five percent away from the mean. That's really the issue here, um, and that's what we're saying. So the answer there is is B. Yes, zero point zero five. And then the other questions I believe are all coefficient type things. So you can see here if we're trying to compare schemes. You know, yes, we know this is 2.7, 2.9, 2.2, 2.2. But we want to sort of know, okay, well, really, in terms of your, your, in terms of comparing, we need to kind of look at ratio. Like, same thing, like with gross profit margin, 
again, I'll come back to that gross profit margin. Someone says I made um, a million, a hundred thousand pounds worth of gross um, gross profit, a hundred thousand pounds worth of gross profit. This is exactly the same thing as standard deviation. Well, we have to ask the question, well, what was your revenue? If your revenue here was 200,000 and your revenue here was 1 million, well, this just changes the way we look at the thing, right? Because we would be looking at this as 100,000 divided by mil and 100,000 divided by 200,000 and rewarding this person. So depending on the context, which is why we have to sort of do this. Okay, great. So what do I have here? I'm literally now going to go, I mean, here we are. So this is the standard deviation divided by the mean, which is 2.7 divided by 7.1. Here, this is 2.9 divided by 9.5. Here, this is 2.2 divided by 4.5, and this is 2.5 divided by 4. Point, by 5.5, right? And that's what this is asking. So very quickly, just doing these figures, I haven't actually, where's my calculator? So here we are, 2.7, 2.7 divided by 7.1 is 0 0.38, 2.9 divided by 9.5 is 0 0.30, 2.2 divided by 4.5 is equal to 0 0.48, and 2.5 divided by 5.5 is equal to 0 0.45. So the, 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 the low one, the one with the lowest coefficient um, of variation is, is, is B. You can see there. So that's the answer, B. Okay, great. And let's move in. Carry on. Um, <clears throat> then we get exactly the same type of thing, which has the largest variability in wages. So kind of which is the largest this time. Right? It's just sort of trying to understand here. So here we have here um, 8 over 600. Here we have here 6 over 500, here we have 7 over 600, and here we have here 5 over 350. So doing this very quickly, 8 divided by 600 gives us 1.3%, right, or 0 0.013. 6 divided by 500 leaves us at 1.2%. 1.2%, here we are. 7 divided by 600 leaves it at 1.116%. And 5 divided by 350 leaves us at 1.4%. So section D, this people, this department has the largest variability in its wages, given that it has the highest um, coefficient of variation, greatest percentage of the mean. Okay, great. And that is, that's that, that's D. This one is saying, if the coefficient of variation is 10%, which, which is standard deviation divided by mean, and they've given us a standard deviation, 100 divided by, basically, what is what is the mean? So if it's 10, if 10 is, which is technically 100 divided by something, what is that thing? Well, that must be a 1,000, right? Because that's 10, 100 divided by that is 0 0.1, which is 10%. So your answer here is C. So those are your que those are questions um, 1, 9, um, probably 2, I think, all the way down to 196. Um, and I'll see you in the next set of videos.